Welcome in the first section of our course. In this section, we will see how to access data layer with Spring Data. So we'll be focusing on the specific module that is available in the Spring framework. Spring Data is a module library that is needed for accessing data, so retrieving and saving, interaction with underlying database. At the beginning, we will be creating Spring Payment Entity so we'll be integrating it with the JPI NDT annotation. Next, we'll be extending CRUD repository with custom methods. So we'll see how can we extend the custom CRUD repository with some methods. First thing that we'll do is testing CRUD repository. So we'll see how to test repository with the in-memory database. And also we'll see how can we switch the underlying database as we need it. First video will be about reworking CRUD repository to work in a reactive fashion. So we will see how to create our application from the bottom to the top in a reactive way. Fifth video will be about testing our reactive CRUD repository. And finally, we will be performing joins between payment and user entities. And this is a first video in which we'll be creating Spring Payment Entity. So we'll start from creating payment entity, but also we'll take a second look at the user entity. We saw that in the previous section, but he will focus more on the annotations and on the definition of the entity. Finally, we'll be understanding ID annotation that is crucial for good data modeling because it will be the unique key, primary key for our data model. So let's find out the payment class. So we can see that this is a payment, simple Pojo class, so plain on Java object, but it is annotated with some additional information. First one is an entity. This is an annotation from Java x.persistence. So we can see that in this class, there is no import related to Spring. And this is a very good thing because that entity that we are defining can be interchanged between different data layer access frameworks. So we can pick Java Hibernate, for example. Also, we can pick Spring Data or any other data framework that is able to generate code based on those entities. So we can see that first thing that we need to do is an entity. This is an annotation that tells us that this specific object should be interpreted as the entity. So it will be injected into the database and also retrieved from the database. So basically, Spring or other FEMA will take that entity and generate some additional code and wrap it around the payment. Next very important field is ID. So ID needs to be annotated with the ID annotation. It means that this is a specific field that will serve a purpose of the primary key. So it should be unique and we can choose two ways for us. First way will be to generate that ID by ourselves. And second one will be to make it auto-generated. We want to make it auto-generated because we don't need to worry about generation. So we can see that we have a couple strategies. It could be an identity. It could be a sequence, table, or auto-generation. In the table, we can point our ID to the specific table. So once we get ID, we can define different fields that will be on that entity. So we are defining user ID, account from, account to, and amount for the payment. We need to create a parameterless constructor because when Spring will retrieve the payment from database, first it initializes the payment without any field, and then it goes through everything and uses setters to set it. Also, we can have multiple different constructors that leverages the fact. So, for example, we have a payment constructor without an ID field. In this example, the ID will be auto generated and will save when we will save that payment. ID will be injected by the spring. On the other hand, if you will specify it explicitly, we don't need to generate it, but then we need to worry about the clash with the auto-generated mechanism. Second entity in our system is a user, and we are following exactly the same pattern. So we are defining that this is an entity, we are defining an ID that is also a long and auto-generated, and finally, we are creating two fields, name and email for our user. So we can see that we are specifying setters, we are setting getters, and also we are creating parameterless constructor, constructor without ID, and constructor with ID. 